Most of us use to-do lists to check off what we need to accomplish on a weekly and daily basis. But the problem with most linear bullet point lists is that they don't tell us how each task is bringing us closer to our bigger goals in life and at work. In other words, they're disconnected from the bigger picture. And if we don't know what we're working towards, then we're prone to getting demotivated and becoming robotic, simply doing things for the sake of doing, rather than being clear about intentions and living deliberately. Hi, I'm Shang, and on this channel, I share ideas and systems that bring us closer to the best versions of ourselves. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn the two-week sprints, which is my main life and work planning tool, into actionable daily to-do mind maps. This technique improves both our effectiveness and motivation because it allows us to methodically break down and work towards our bigger goals. And seeing it all laid out in a mind map form gives us a very clear picture of which tasks we need to tackle first. All right, let's dive in. First, I want to briefly review the goals funnel framework that I covered in the previous video on using Notion to track our medium term goals. This is the system that I use to turn my ideas into actionable executional steps. First is the bucket list. These are long-term life goals like cycling across the country, buying a home, or traveling the world. Next are the medium-term goals. This is the stuff that I want to do in the next year, and this could be a subset of the bucket list. Then comes the two-week sprints. These are the tasks and goals I want to achieve in the next two weeks. And then finally, there is the to-do list mind map, which we're going to be covering today. These are the building blocks of the two-week sprints. And finally, there is a retrospective component at the end of every two weeks that is a reflection on what went well, what didn't go so well, and whether or not I want to continue certain tasks going forward into the next two weeks. The retrospective also acts as a tool to triangulate my real wants and desires since a lot of the goals that we dream up of are often fantasies until we actually start doing them. Here's an example of a two-week sprint that I covered in a previous video that I'll link below. In this particular sprint, there are four major categories or focus areas of fitness, community, YouTube, and business. Each of these focus areas has a breakdown of subcomponents, which then can be broken down into individual tasks. It's these individual tasks that make up the to-do mind map that we're gonna go into next. All right, now we're getting into the deep executional part of the goals funnel. So for example, if I were to start with to-do, let's see, to-do, nine, four, and I'm gonna start with the major categories of business, community, YouTube, and let's see, maybe errands, right? So I try to build in some flexibility around some potentially random things that do come up, some random opportunities, since I don't wanna to be too uh, strict, essentially, with my to-dos. So in terms of business, I want to look into basically researching a corporate entity that's suitable for my solo. It could be a sole proprietorship or it could be a corporation or LLC. And then we've got community, which I've got a call with a VC friend, a venture capitalist friend, primarily because I'm looking to get back into startup consulting, call with investor friend scheduled today. We've got a product review for one of my friends who is launching a new company, right? So product review slash feedback, dinner with LBS friend, London business friend. So that's community. Between here, I've got multiple tasks, right? And the great thing about a mind map is that I'm able to break out the individual components of a particular category. So if YouTube is kind of, you know, an, a broad category, um, there is, a kind of a, a pipeline of action steps that I, I'm juggling at any given time. So for example, we've got a survey that I want to do. Basically, this is part of research. So for each video that I make, there's a research component to it too. There, that's part of planning. Writing. So basically, writing the broad, you know, a rough script or an outline of what I want to say. And then there is the filming component. Under survey, 
I want to compile contacts. So basically I'm doing some research around one of the new videos I'm making, which is, is it worthwhile to apply for an MBA in 2021 from a top program? So for this one, I need to compile a contacts list to send out the survey, and then I need to actually send it out. These are two distinct actions to do items essentially. And then we've got writing. So I need to plan for Marcus Aurelius's meditations video which is coming soon. And then we've got filming, right? So for example, <laughs> literally right now, filming the to-do mind map video. So a bit meta. And then under errands, so I think today I need to fill out a UC Berkeley alumni um, note. This is basically, I think, a quarterly magazine that goes out to all the Berkeley alumni about what's going on with, you know, that community, right? I need to update people that I had left my job and now being on the solo creative path. So this looks like a pretty solid to do under all these different categories. Now I, you know, at a glance, I'll know exactly what task goes under what umbrella a focus area that I we'll want to pursue. And then the next step is to assign a time estimate. And this is just a good practice that I like to do, which is actually, let's make that a little bit smaller. I'm using Notability, by the way, for this, which I made a tutorial before as well. And I love this app because you're able to essentially, you know, shrink stuff, move things around, use different pen and colors for annotation, which really makes my mapping much more manageable. So definitely check out that review if you're curious. The next step is to assign a time frame for each of these. These are essentially estimations of, you know, how long it's gonna actually take for each task, right? The whole point of this is so that I can do a sanity check that uh, you know if all the hours add up for these individual tasks I can actually accomplish them in a single day it doesn't make sense for me to actually make a huge to-do list or mind map of things that's gonna spill over let's say like 14 hours or something right so that would um, essentially allow me to just see hey this is what I'm gonna do for today researching corporate entity I think that's gonna take about an hour or so so I'm gonna put one hour and then we got a call with my VC friend that's gonna be I think about all right so now what I can do is just tabulate up all of the hours into the broad categories so all of these are gonna be you know rolled up so to say so now we've got I'm gonna spend an hour on business, two hours total on community. Oh, actually, no, that is definitely wrong. I didn't do the math right. Three hours, guys, three hours. Always double check. Uh, three hours on community, five hours on YouTube, and uh, half an hour on errands. So all of these added up then is nine and a half hours. So this is pretty doable. I mean, it's fitting in within a entire workday plus more given, you know, dinner and everything after work. So it is a very realistic to-do list. And then finally, what I like to do is actually to prioritize everything as well. So I actually use a different ink so that I can mark, you know, one, two, three, four to 10 or whatever it is so that I can actually know what to tackle first. YouTube is going to be the first priority, I would say, like the overall priority one. And then second, it's going to be, I think, business, this third, and then this overall category. You can also skip around, right? But I like assigning basically prioritization to the broad categories first. So I know these are the focus areas that will uh, that I want to tackle first. Under YouTube, I want to send out the survey first, and then we've got, I want to do the filming next, right? And then we've got planning, writing. So even within here, you can actually assign like, you know, one and two, right? After YouTube, it's going to be business. So this is going to be four, five, six, seven. So since this is scheduled, right, I'll stop whatever it is that I'm doing in order to actually take this call. But overall, it's gonna be kind of priority five for the most part. So I'm gonna be focusing on the things that happen that are numbered before it. And finally, we've got eight. We've got a total of eight to nine to do items depending on which node, which part of essentially the mind map that you're numbering. And this is a critical step since now, I know exactly what to go through and also cross off once I'm done. So for example, 
compile to context list. If I'm done, I cross it off, I cross it off, I cross it off. And once all of these are crossed off, then I can basically uh, cross off the entire area of that focus area of YouTube. And it just feels so good to see everything crossed out on your mind map at the end of the day. Hopefully you've gotten a sense of how to apply this into your own life. For example, let's say you're trying to design a company website and that means in your daily to do, you would have website as the focus area and then you can break that into, let's say Canva designs, mockups, coordinating with design agency. Finally, you've got gaining stakeholder consensus or approval. Each of these tasks then would be given its own priority and time estimate. So let's say Canva uh, mockups, two hours, design agency, one hour, gaining stakeholder consensus, another hour. So that's a total of four hours or basically half a workday, pretty achievable. And then from there, if you had other priorities, let's say account management as another category, right? But at the same time, at this point, you would know that this is your top priority, the website. This is the second priority in terms of focus area. And these are the sequence of steps that you would take during your day. All of this is now laid out in a mind map form. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. I've put a link in my entire end-to-end -end goals funnel framework in the description below in case you wanna see how I put everything together into practice. I'll probably also make a video of that in the future. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And until next time, take care now.